come and uh, facilitate the whole process. Yannick. Thank you very much again for the uh, opportunity to have this panel with you guys. Uh, I'm Yaniv Naor. I'm working currently in Hugo Boss as the Master Data Management Lead. And in today's panel, we'll talk about data as a key asset for the digital transformation um, and the way it is. So just so that our audience are aligned with us, please, which each one of you, please introduce himself, what he's doing, his role, and how many years he's been in this domain of data management. Sure. Uh, shall I start? Yes, please. Hi, um, I'm Ramesh Panikal. I work um, for Wearscape uh, Europe Limited. I'm uh, the customer success manager for EMEA. Um, I pretend I look after all of our enterprise customers. I'm also a former customer. I used to work at uh, Xerox Financial Services, um, again, as the EMEA Risk, Direct, Risk Analytics Director, um, where I was responsible for um, managing all the risk reporting, um, scorecard analytics, and so on. Uh, and I was there for uh, 10 years doing that before I joined uh, Westgate four years ago. Thank you. Bruno, please. Oh, um, hi everyone, thanks you for uh, inviting me to, to this panel. I'm Bruno, I'm from TigerGraph, located in Munich, um, solution engineer uh, at TigerGraph. I'm in this uh, data management uh, space very long because I have, a, I would say, a longer uh, history of uh, being with databases like uh, now TigerGraph, Graph Database, Graph Analytics System to be, to, uh, be more precise. Um, worked for Couchbase, uh, NoSQL database, with also analytic uh, platform. Worked for MariaDB, um, so they had uh, this Kalner system, which was also used as an analytic platform. And uh, before this time, I was using, I was doing actually lots of uh, system and database migration for large uh, companies uh, in, in Europe, uh, like automotive or financial or uh, pharma companies. Interesting. Arish, please go next. Yeah, my name is Arish. Uh, I'm a data science lead in the Syngenta. So as you see on the back is CropWise Syngenta. So what CropWise means like why I basically serve to the digital customer, to the growers. So I'm closely working with the grower. I've been working in this role for last two years. And before that, I was working on the vanilla data science in uh, kind of like a, the entire organization like P&S, commercial and everything. And I have in total 15 years of experience, uh, specifically in the area of data science. I work with uh, banking, uh, agriculture, pharma, and uh, Microsoft. Yeah. So I have multiple years of experience in different, different areas here. Yeah. And hey, Musimo. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'm working for uh, DSM, uh, that is an international company, very active uh, in uh, nutrition and a size based company also in health. Uh, and uh, pharma. Um, I'm a principal scientist uh, in uh, data science and digital transformation, and I'm working on uh, research projects of artificial intelligence and data science. Uh, before uh, this experience, I worked uh, for more than 10 years uh, in climate change projects with um, United Nations, and, uh, and after I moved to Nespresso uh, in an analytics company. Thank you. Thank you. I think Eugene, you're the last one, right? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Eugene uh, Mirosh. I'm uh, working uh, as a head of uh, data and analytics in an industrial company that is called uh, Spira. Uh, we are located in uh, the northern uh, Westphalia in Germany uh, and uh, are running uh, around seven uh, manufacturing facilities in Germany and in Norway. Uh, I'm uh, already about uh, a bit more than 10 years in the data management domain. Uh, and uh, my current job functions is uh, the platform, uh, data analytics platform management, uh, also the business and the intelligence use cases, reporting use cases, but also the advanced analytics, including the data science uh, in manufacturing. Great. So guys, we see that we all come from different domains, different industries doing something kind of similar, right? Data management, analytics, data science, and data governance. But we all are equated with the phrase going digital. What does digital transformation mean to you in correlation to your job? Yeah, so I can start. Uh, so I can start the discussion. So for me, digital transformation means uh, not only 
play with the technology and innovation, but uh, uh, play also with uh, how people work. Uh, and this is, I would say, can radically change how people uh, manage the uh, process, uh, the daily process in the uh, life and uh, in the company. So for me, digital transformation is a challenge uh, also for, uh, um, uh, I mean, for the management of the change in the company. I don't know what other people think about it. Guys, anybody else thinks differently than Massimo here? No, I think. Sorry, guys. No, I think with me, I think digital is more of a kind of like a. It's an. It's a. I would say I think it's created a new opportunity altogether uh, to uh, connect to the different customers or uh, connect to the data internally altogether. I think and once on the one side, digital is helping us to record the data more accurately. On the other side, it is helping us to reach to the customer through different, different ways. I think so. That's how I think what, what I call digital here. Yeah. I have to agree with you. I think that digitalization means that we are becoming more and more people customer oriented in a way, right? We're trying to collaborate with customers in a digital manner, trying to give them technology as a best practice, right? But on the other hand, we are more interactive with them. Paperless world is part of the digitalization, of course, right? But there are other side effects to digitalization because it's a base foundation for everything that we do in our companies, right? We contact, we contact the consumers, we receive their data, and we build on top of that. Do you feel the same that we build on our analytic models? analytic statistics and so on, based on what we receive from the customers? You think they are aware of this? I think, uh, I think in this day and age, you know, the, the, the role that data, especially digital data plays in everybody's daily lives means that consumers are um, in general, a lot more knowledgeable about how, uh, and, and quite rightly so, they're more knowledgeable about how their data gets used at customers, uh, sorry, at, uh, at companies and, and um, you know, it, it, data has now become possibly the, the, the most valuable commodity within a business, right? That's true. Does it have a value, uh, monetary it, it, value? It, well, it, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, when it comes down to goodwill and performance, you know, the data, the, the, the quality and the agility with which you can, um, um, you can utilize the information that you're collecting and have at your fingertips, you know, can often, not only influence the way that your customers interact with you, but also how your employees are able to uh, interact with both the business and their, and their uh, customer facing uh, interactions, it's right? It's really interesting because this is a philosophical question. Does data have a monetary value for the organization, right? So if you look at all your financial reports, data is not mentioned with a value, right? But without that data, you probably could not run your business. But you're also yeah. looking these days at uh, you know, such significant financial investments made by companies around managing and storing and, and analyzing. That's data. true. That's true. That's true. You look at the storage, you look at the governance, you look at the security. That's true. But you don't look at the content as an yeah, aspect. But, uh, th this is true. The, the fact here is that uh, uh, basically th it's not a direct uh, connection between the data and the price. It is actually what you get when you analyze the data. So this would be actually your, your total cost of ownership or return of investment or whatever you, mm -hmm. you have here. And I would agree with all of you because uh, I think uh, digital transformation is not a single item and uh, it's, it can be understand on, uh, only on one, one, uh, in one way. Um, I think uh, for somebody, digital transformation will be maybe for, for a German, German government, uh, you know now how they work, some of them uh, scanning documents, uh, fax documents would be dig digital transformation. Um, for, for somebody would be actually uh, something else, getting insights in their data that were not possible a few years ago. Why? Because you didn't have the power of computing power to do this. You didn't have the possibility of use, using machine learning uh, algorithms because uh, it was not, not possible because the distribution was not there. Uh, you didn't have the possibility of predictions like you have now. So this is actually, I think, the whole scope of digital transformation. From the beginning, uh, somebody scanning the documents to the uh, company like, I don't know, yes. Amazon using, using it to m do better profiling on, on their customers and getting more, more value. This is, an interesting point that you raise, this is an interesting point that you're raising about digitalization, going digital, right? We all know the phrase, but we all do different things and we all call it going digital, right? Yeah. So if you look from one company to another, one domain to another, 
they do digitalization in their own aspect, but it's totally different from one to another, right? And now when we look at it, when we say that customer dig digitalization, B2C and B2B, are they the same or are they different in their essence? I think they are, they are thinking from on, from, a, from a monetary prospect or perspective, it will be the same. Why are you doing this? To get, let's say, better, better, uh, uh, I would say, uh, um, better commercialization of, of your, your data. So to get more out of, out of the data. For the business to business would be probably just uh, uh, the, same, the same reason. It's, it's getting more um, productivity, getting, um, I don't know, uh, um, if you're talking about supply chain management, more, uh, uh, better uh, insight in what you can pro produce, uh, less risk and so on and so on. So this is, I think, at the end, the, the question would be uh, why we are doing this, and it's because of money. So you would like to have get more money from your data. That's it. Also, you know, you're driving you're driving better. If you think about IoT, right? These days, the velocity and quantity of information that we're able to consume is incredible compared to say five or six years ago. Um, and, and just being able to collect that amount of information in such a short space of time with such a high degree of frequency and relative accuracy as well now, you know, it's no longer the case where um, you have a, a huge amount of data quality issues with the, the, the quality of information that's coming in because the standards that have, have now been formalized um, to a certain degree, uh, you know, there are file formats and, and, and other um, rigorous processes that, that, that help um, structure the information that was that we're starting to consume and that gives us a lot more access and a lot more capability in terms of being able to um, really utilize modeling techniques um, heuristic patterns um, you know the the idea of being able to forecast and understand what um, the behaviors that we should expect would be um, is now much more at our fingertips so you know being able to monetize that as you say is um, is, is a very um, interesting proposition and a great opportunity for, for, for companies these days. Eugene, I think uh, you are actually very heavy B2B. I think, can you elaborate on like, how does it actually work, especially in the B2B? Yeah, uh, actually, it's a very interesting question that uh, Yanni raised, uh, the, the difference between B2B and B2C. Uh, I think we all agree that uh, digital uh, helps uh, our companies uh, to to uh, to achieve uh, its business goals. Uh, it contributes to to the company's strategy. I think that is the similarities that I can see uh, between B two B and B two C. But uh, the approach and the way uh, uh, is uh, a bit different. I could imagine that, for example, on B two C, what is important, like uh, their yeah, personification. Uh, some suggestions, what could be interesting for your customer. Uh, yes, yeah, something like this. Individualization, uh, um, that is probably not uh, so important in the B2B. Uh, in B2B- Sorry, in sorry, did I inter sorry did I interrupt you, but a customer would be a customer, whether it's a business or individual, right? So personaliza personalization yeah. and approach to a customer should be somewhere on the highest level, right? Yes, I agree, but- um, uh, I should explain because in our uh, in our case uh, uh, where we are manufacturing a kind of a finished product, it's not like a, um, a, a five or ten uh, products. Uh, so every product that we uh, um, produce, it is a, a custom cu custom a customized product. So um, in in the year we have around thirty thousand uh, different products. That's uh, very high number and it is every product is very very individual so uh from this perspective that is uh definitely um personification uh is, is it plays a very important role but again uh it uh it is very um uh connected uh, to the company's strategy so for example if we have a focus on increasing the productivity increasing performance reducing cost the bottlenecking of our manufacturing facilities then uh yeah, it's a bit uh, another story here. And uh, we have a, a different use cases and a different focus as in, in for example, in 100% uh, B2C uh, uh, companies. That's what I wanted to, I think that, to say. I think the, digitali the digitalization was starting as a, as a buzzword, as a trend. And many companies thought about it 
should we go digital? Yes or no, right? And then you could see that some companies go digital because their competitors in the same domain do the same. So they go in that direction. Others do it for surviving, right? But some are actually leading the trend with digitalization. Now, the question is, from your companies and your experiences, do you feel that once you started implementing digitalization, right, in your company, did you invest more money? Did you invest more effort? And is it recently, is it reduced the workload or increased it from your perspective? I think it changes the perspective of an organization. So it definitely increase the workload uh, uh, from, uh, I think, IT point of view or from the infrastructure point of view. It definitely increased the workload, but it reduced the workload in terms of solving the problem. Uh, so I came from an agriculture background. I worked with John Deere, and they are they're considered to be pioneer in the digitization because they started thinking 10 years ago. Their tractor was autonomous way before I think we we're thinking about autonomous vehicle. <laughs> So, but I think when I look at, when I look back at them, I think they were heavily investing in infrastructure when the infrastructure was really expensive. But at, at this time, they are the pioneer in that one. And I think it changes the perception of an organization altogether. It basically creates kind of like a, a vision for most of the other organization to follow. Yeah. But it gives a very, I think, uh, good understanding to the internal customer about their product, about their customer, about their future need, about, uh, I think, their problems, their challenges. Uh, it gives a very clear understanding about it. It takes time, but it comes ultimately to the point that where they have very clear understanding. Yeah. Anybody else feel differently? Yeah, I mean, say... Go ahead. Okay, so basically, I, I'm not, um, um, let's say, our product is used in, in many different uh, verticals. So we have very, uh, I would say, distributed base of customers. Uh, what I see there is uh, there are some trendsetters that have started with digitalization uh, very early uh, from, for various reasons. And uh, this is a process. So this is something that the company itself has to learn. So you cannot actually force it and say, okay, we are now going to do the digitalization and be, um, be actually uh, the leading in. Uh, uh, into it, uh, no matter how, how much money are you investing. It is something that uh, is done with a, uh, with a company itself. So it's growing in, within the company. So uh, maybe the, the, um, the company that uh, uh, Harish mentioned was investing a lot of money uh, as the, the whole system or infrastructure was, was uh, very uh, expensive, but they also have now a, a big uh, step forward in uh, 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 against uh, others because they already did this this part and, and this learning journey, let's say it like this. It is always a journey. So the, the, the question is how long it takes. And this is for, for all industries that we are uh, uh, covering. So from uh, financial industries to uh, automotive productions and, and so on and so on. Yeah, I think, I, think yeah. I agree with that. I think we've got um, similarly, you know, Worldscape, we have a, a a very diverse customer base and you know we, we deal with sm um uh, small to medium-sized businesses as well as enterprise customers you know we will sell licenses between two and i have 300 developers on projects in in, in some companies um and you know what we see in terms of the effectiveness of, of going digital really depends on um the level of automation that can assist with that process right so um where where companies sometimes struggle in their journey to understand what um, uh, what their digital assets can provide is actually having the um, having the time to invest in investigating it rather than you know spending a lot of time trying to work out well what's the architecture going to look like how do I build this what kind of code do I have to write all that kind of stuff um, so if they're able to I, I have to ask uh, sorry go ahead. I have to ask you a question. You said that sometimes the business does not understand the essence of the digitalization and what the added value is, right? Yeah. What do you think the learning curve is for the business? Uh -huh. So we go digital because the management. So we go digital because the management said we go digital. But what is yep. the learning curve internally for the company to actually make use of the transformation that we did? Well, you have to. You have to. First of all, you have to find your your subject matter experts and and, and get them talking to each other so they, they understand. Holistically, how the how the bits of the puzzle fit together to give you the overall picture. 
That's the first thing. Second of all, you then have to battle through the politics of, of understanding who's responsible for all of this stuff and, you know, creating that, that um, diligent structure around it so that it's a protected asset. The third thing is then how do you transform it into something that's just from, from, from data to information, right? And it's, it's having the speed of being able to do that, you know, alongside all of these other processes that really um, provides value. And I, have to be, I have to build on top of your answer. Who is usually le leading the transformation in the business? Is it the uh, business or the IT, Massimo? What do you think? Well, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, normally we start with the, with, uh, with the IT. So the big <laughs> challenge uh, is uh, to raise the, the need to make, uh, uh, to, to create a process of data evaluation. So data evaluation is the process where we transform data into value. And uh, one of the big uh, challenge indeed uh, is uh, to make uh, people in the business uh, aware of the potential behind the data evaluation. Um, because most of the times when you go uh, to the business groups and uh, you ask what you need, they will always uh, see the picture they have in front of, of them in terms of a daily work, a daily process, and they do not get the the innovation aspect uh, of the digital transformation. So I think at the beginning, it is up to the specialist uh, to go and, uh, and raise the interest. Well, this brings, back, brings us all back to the philosophical question, right? Is the business supposed to be leading the business or the IT, right? We know that the IT is supposed to be giving support to the business and business is supposed to be pulling forward. So as an IT counterpart, how can I tell the business that they should go digital because I have great technology without them understanding what it, what's the benefit, right? Shouldn't it be right. the other way around? Well, it's interesting you should say that because at Xerox, it was, you know, I was the one from the business who was driving the requirement. You know, I, had, I was having pitch battles with my IT department because they wanted to do something which really just didn't fit what I needed. And in the end, I went off and did my own thing, proved the solution, and then got them on board with the way that I wanted to do it. Um, and actually, it was, you know, it was a really interesting journey because we had, to, we, we had to think strategically while we were doing this tactical initiative, right? And how did it fit in and how, from a commercial standpoint, if we were to go down this route, you know, how do we get buy-in from the other side of the, the, the fence? And I think traditionally, you know, there, there has been that standoff between the business and the IT um, sort of area. Right, IT is a they're, they're black box witchcraft merchants over there, and the business guys are all very fruity and they have targets that they need to hit, and they haven't got time for all this craziness. So, you know, getting those two parties talking to each other and collaborating uh, is a very, very important part of this process, absolutely. And you is usually the owner of the data? Question. Oh, well, <laughs> the data or the infrastructure? Because <laughs> I think the it's data. a bit of both. So, so let, let's, let's, uh, straw line here. We got the business to understand that they need digital information, right? They have a business scenario that they want to implement and they understand that while using digitalization, right, they could probably get some more consumer data to use for their own benefits. If it's commercial, I don't know, campaigning or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Then they go to the IT and they ask for the infrastructure and the capabilities, right, to make it happen. Yeah. Now, now we get the data and we get customers signing our documents and we have some customer data. Who's owning the data, the business or the IT? Mm -hmm. Well, I the think uh, the business uh, yeah, for sure. The the Sorry, business owns the data and IT helps them to curate the data and use the data in an effective way. But business owns the data. And who's yeah. in charge? Who's in charge of data governance and data cleansing? That's very good and question. data alignment. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, it's very different. It's, it's right? difficult to say it, and uh, that it's uh, like always uh, uh, the one situation. So it will uh, uh, meet different uh, scenarios and different organizations with different setups. Yeah. Um, I think important here the collaboration, as uh, Ramesh yeah. also said, uh, that IT collaborates with business or business collaborates with IT, uh, and uh, important to create a framework for this collaboration. So it's, a, it's almost like a car, I think. It's car is kind of like a, a, a engine, but owners owns it, right? So IT is like a car for them. They can use it as as and what you want. They can use it to drop their kids to the school. They can use it to sell the stuff. They can use it for anything. But IT is a mean to way to get the things done. But it has to be collaborated effectively. Yeah. I think about the car. 
sorry, but talking about the car, I, I, I think we are now uh, uh, with this also transforming the car industry. So we are with Tesla. You don't own a car. You actually uh, get the, the uh, um, you lease it. So it's, it's always somewhere uh, Tesla's property. But uh, I would say uh, from my experience that um, um, even um, let's say if the um, business and, and IT uh, should talk with each other for uh, very various reasons, now um, uh, the IT departments are not so important like they were uh, in, a, in the past. Why this? Because we have now uh, cloud services, we have uh, software or systems as a service where a business can actually do some clicks and, and uh, deploy what they need. And in this case, uh, the, the pressure that IT has on business is, is much lower. So they need now to talk with, with, uh, with business more than uh, uh, in, in the past. So I've expressed from my past experience, and I'm about 20 years in this domain of data management, and I've done both sides of the, of the coin, business and IT. I do feel that data managers, right, should be sitting in the business. They have to understand the business concept in order to translate it to IT requirements. And it's always good to have a business person who knows IT, knows a bit of, about coding, about database infrastructure, right, so that they can talk in the same language. We're talking in different languages in the business, right? And then... To what, what, what you're saying now, uh, Bruno, the IT are very much pressurized with the new technology coming out there, right? Trying to give the business more capabilities. Having data scientists sitting in the business and doing analytics, for example, right? Yeah. Having Microsoft, for example, de developing power apps, which is the newest trend for companies to allow the business to create their own IT softwares, yeah. right? Self-service. Self-service, self self -service, <laughs> you know, codeless work, you know? We are seeing a shift in the understanding of how data should be managed, right? And taking away, I would say, some of the responsibility from the IT and transferring it to the business. What but, do you, so, sorry? But, what do you, sorry, one more minute. What, uh, do you think, what do you think will happen in the next couple of years, right? When we, the business has enough capabilities uh -huh. with no need for coding, right? But we have the infrastructure. So how is the balance gonna be between business and IT in the future? Well, that's, that's just what I was going to come to. The, the, the big but there is in order for self-servicing <laughs> and, you know, the, the, uh, the, the very departmental focused um, capability to work, you have to have resilience and scalability, right? Without that's that true. reliability and the underlying trust that the business needs in, in the infrastructure that delivers that information that they can then analyze, utilize and uh, deliver value from, you know, without that trust, it's, it, it's meaningless. It's worthless. You're kind of going back to, um, you know, the dark ages where IT would just provide the information and, um, you know, the business users would have no faith in it because they didn't understand how it got there. So it was, you, you, it, the, I think for, for, for the future, IT has a, a very important role to play in making sure that the security of that information, the diligence with which it's provided and the transparency with which it provides um, clarity to the to the to the business users um, is. Made. I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll take you 20, 20 years back, right when we had mm -hmm. Excel primitive Excel's, right, and we each worked on our different files, and then they will all ask which one is the latest one, right? And there was a big struggle struggle trying to understand what we did and which one was the latest Excel file. And why am I giving this example? Because I think that with the capabilities of having Power Apps and allowing the business to build their own reports, their own capabilities, and so on, right, we might be facing a problem where things are not aligned because we don't have control on what they build, right? And I think that IT in this essence would have a major struggle, right? In trying to align all the tools. So we will become more of a governing uh, organization, right? Rather than, than an enabler itself. Uh, but this is a very, very big topic. And I think that everybody is working towards more business oriented IT approach. And I think that the, uh, the problems that we see are just around the corner, you know, we still don't know what the capabilities are, but they are all still around the corner. And back to digitalization, with, with the alignment of more data aligning and the set rules of who's taking care of the data and who's owning it, right? Data scientists, which are, I would say, a very big trend in the last couple of years, right? They were named statisticians before that, you know, when the name has changed in the last five to 10 years. And now the question is, where should they be located? In the organization and what is their added value right towards the business and towards the IT yeah I mean I can tell you what is uh, 
the experience. So, uh, of course, the data scientists uh, uh, are precious uh, and uh, they are quite uh, uh, specific uh, for the business group where they work. But it is true also that data scientists uh, uh, need to work together because uh, um, the, um, there are uh, uh, margins of errors in what they do because they work with statistics and totally with uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. So 80, more than 80% of uh, artificial intelligence projects fail to create value with the data. Eh? So the, the statistic is very high eh? and uh, the, the failure is very high. So in my experience, so I think that the creation of a digital hub is uh, fundamental. Uh, 20, 20 years ago, they were called data analysts, right? Every organization had a data business analyst. analyst. Yes, business analyst. Business analyst. This was the trend, right? It's true. And now they're data scientists. So has yeah. their role changed? Yeah, a lot. It shifted, a lot because, uh, shifted uh, towards uh, statistics, uh, advanced statistics, uh, and uh, uh, towards uh, development. Towards, and the question is, are they doing their models based on previous data, or most of you data scientists are forecasting, right? Trying to predict, predict trends, trying to build futuristic models. Yeah, we're, we're building the witchcraft back into the business with, uh, with data science. It's a, it's a really fascinating area. I think, um, you know, when I, just before I, I finished at Xerox, we, were, we put together our um, scorecard analytics team, you know, statistical analytics team. Um, where they were building out, you know, credit scorecard um, uh, rule-based um, analytical models, um, and they were, you know, they were they were building them into real-time web-based applications. Um, and it, it's fascinating to see how the our ability to be able to deliver that that um, that um, capability had such a profound effect on the productive nature and the, the ability to control and manage risk within the organization. And it was very, very fast. I mean, it wasn't a case of, um, um, it took years and years and years. You know, within a year, uh, we had models out for, for all of our countries. We had data feeds coming in. We had people working on those models continuously just to, making, uh, to fine tune and make sure that they were efficient in understanding what the risk profile looked like and so on. So, so yeah, it was, uh, you know, I think that the role of data science in, in, in the industry is, is starting to, to, to gain prominence. Okay, great. Uh, this is totally this interesting discussion because I think that data scientists are now an integrated part of the organization. No matter where they're located in the business or the IT, they do collaborate with both and they have a very, very big added value to the organization. If, and there's a big if, if the organization knows what to do with the data that they receive, right? because sometimes data scientists forecast, see things in their pattern. I would say they're kind of geniuses, right? Because they do something that nobody else does on a daily business. They're trying to predict the future in a way or trying to build models to see who the customers are in a profiling manner, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes businesses do not know how to use that information. And you could see that sometimes when they come up with a model and because it's a bit too sophisticated for the organizations, their understanding is put aside. It takes a couple of months, years, for them to actually adapt it, but it, it is out there. How would you and your organization actually measure the, uh, the digital transformation? Was it a good one? Was it a bad one? How could we improve? Do you have any, any criteria, any KPIs for the measurements, Eugene? Yeah, I think, uh, again, uh, uh, I have seen different KPIs and uh, different uh, metrics uh, how to measure the success of the digital transformation. Um, all of them not really good from my perspective. And uh, um, there are uh, different uh, views uh, on, 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 on the success, uh, if the transformation was uh, good or not. Uh, but for, for example, um, uh, and again, uh, there are there are some uh, metrics uh, that are more business oriented, business related, and metrics that are more IT related. So important also to differentiate. Uh, like for example, uh, the uh, um, yeah the these SLAs, uh, the availability uh, of your platform, data analytics platform, that is definitely an IT uh, related KPI. 
Uh, uh, one metric that I saw then the number of use cases, I was not very uh, happy about this. Uh, it just uh, shows, tells you that uh, you are doing the use cases and uh, you are good on it, but uh, it does not really uh, tell you uh, if yeah, it brings uh, value to the company. So that's why uh, we have a little bit changed uh, the approach and uh, we are trying to measure uh, the contribution to the uh, um, yeah, corporate strategy and uh, the uh, cost optimization program, for example, using the di digital uh, use cases. Guys, I see that Musin here is on the on the on the call already. So I, first of all, before he cuts the call short, I like to say thank Excuse you very much guys. for the thank you very much for the panel. It was a very interesting discussion. I think that we all learned from it. Uh, I'd like to thank you personally and the audience themselves, and I hope you a great evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Really good to be here. Thank Bye. you so much. Right. Thanks Bye a lot. Now. It's Thank amazing you. having you here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah, Thank thanks you. a lot. So still we have two minutes slowly to uh, go to the next presentation.